you would agree that buybacks have had a tremendously stimulative effect on the stock market. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, so what's the problem? Okay, so let me explain. Uh, a lot of people disagree with what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it. It is big, just as you say, Scott. And the numbers are really bigger than people realize. It's $600 billion a year of stocks being bought, and it actually affects the quarterly trading. Two, I believe 80 percent, 400 of the S&P companies are buying back their stock. And three, through August, 50 percent of those companies lost money doing it. And now with the rally, a third have lost it, 136 versus 266 on last week's data. So the facts are it is huge and it's big. The problem is that I believe there's a policy question what American companies should do with their money. Buy, buy backs. You know, we were just having a debate out here as to whether or companies or like investment. Apple are good stewards of their capital. Right. Whether and the politicians buying. want investment and some people hold cash. But my problem is what the shareholders get is the dividend. And you buy, they buy the stock 50, 60, 80, 100. Ten years later, it's 20. What the shareholder got over the 10 years is the dividend. That's the return to the shareholder. So companies over and over again, our total return to the shareholders is the buyback plus the dividend. The return to the shareholder, in my opinion, is that. And I'd go further if I may say, I would have a multi-year disclosure of what the companies bought back at what price, which I think... There's nothing wrong with disclosure, and you'll see the great success and then the great setbacks, and, when, and I think that'll change the policy. Now, I actually would go further. I would also disclose what executives have been selling when the companies have been buying back, and I would show that over a 10-year period, and I also would show how much stock is being granted to employees and executives. My belief is the top executives are not leaving. The stock grants need to go to attract the young talent coming along. Is this a binary thing that, you know, I, I'm not, you're not taking the stance that it's uh, either good or bad. There are good buyers back of their stock, and then there maybe are bad ones. Is that fair to say? I would say, and I meant to say this, there are, in my opinion, there are positively good buyers, which I can identify. Uh, but I would not call it a return to shareholders, interestingly. Um, the classic good buyer, to me, is a company that's deep under, deeply undervalued, run by an entrepreneurial or ownership group that knows if they buy their stock, they're adding value to the shareholders who hold their stock. That is fine, and that happens, and that's desirable. Don't forget, if a sh if y it's not shareholder return when you buy, you know the stock's worth 100 and you buy it from 60 for the shareholder. The return is only for the shareholders who continue to hold the stock. I mean, you say Apple, Microsoft, Oracle, Home Depot, Walmart are success stories of the year, according to you, in terms of buybacks. I'll tell you in 10 years. Hmm. My view is that we have to take a long-term view, and the long-term view will put so a let me, different so let me, light on let me, this. Let me, let, me, let me take the other side of that. I understand what you're saying, but I disagree when you say they've lost money buying shares, those, those few companies where the share price has gone down. Because um, as you say, I'll tell you in 10 years if this was smart, because what they're doing is two things. First of all, they're raising earnings per share. You might say it's artificial, that's fine. But second of all, they are legitimately returning capital to shareholders, and they're doing so in a way that's got a tax benefit relative to dividends. Dividend, tax, dividend taxation is terrible. Um, the return of capital through buybacks is tax-free until the investor decides to sell. And what we're seeing now in the industry, and I'm sure you see this every day, is a preference for long-term investing, a preference for indexing versus trading in and out of stocks. And so the investors that sit tight, they do realize the benefit of that return of capital, and they don't pay for it every time they get a dividend check um, in order to receive that. So if you want to, if you want to change things, arguably change the tax law, in favor of dividends and, and against uh, buybacks. You make a great point that I meant to make and a good point that I didn't think about. Okay. Uh, the dividend point of changing the tax point, I'd love. Uh, but I did make the point, it is, and one of my colleagues said, make sure you say this this morning, John, is that it is a tax-free payment mm -hmm. to the shareholder. But uh, 
A counterpoint to me of this is, for example, if the political structure of the United States changed and taxes got to be much higher, and I can envision some candidates who think that the capital gains rate should go up and the estate tax should go up and the wealth tax should go up, it would be very unclear what the shareholder tax rate will be when they receive the supposed money any number of years in this. In it's the always future. unclear, though. Well, Jim, what do you think? First of all, John, it's so great to have you. And John is the deacon. I, we should like to just point out, when I first uh, left Goldman Sachs to look for an office, John was so kind to lend me both uh, advice and office space if I wanted it. And so we're talking to <laughs> someone who knows such a great deal. John, I agree with you in the sense that I used to do uh, debate Larry Kudlow, of all things, Kudlow and Kramer. He wanted to lower capital gains tax. And I always said, let's lower dividend tax, keep capital right. gains okay, so that we encourage companies to do this kind of uh, this long-term thinking. I had David Farr on. I know that Emerson under attack, but you know, he's, he's a dividend aristocrat. And to me, that means you've got a company that is solid, that people can be in. It's a really good thing. And I think individual investors have been driven off because they, they, they frankly don't understand the point of the market. They thought it was dividend. They don't understand buyback. Now, you could say they're unsophisticated, but I just think that if Elizabeth Warren comes in, I hope that she does keep a dividend tax low so that you feel like it is worth taking a dividend she, check. She's saying two things at the same time, and they're incongruous. It can't both be true. So she hates Amazon because they're a monopolist, and they're getting into all these industries, and they've out-invested everyone else to the point where no one can compete with them. Okay, so you don't like that. Amazon does no buybacks. Amazon does no dividends, okay? So that's one model of what to do with excess capital. You don't like that, Elizabeth? What do you like better? You like dividends? Okay, then let's not have a tax rate that confiscates money that, by the way, has already been taxed at the corporate level. Yes. Right. So it's your, your example, Emerson, it's double taxation. Emerson earns money, they get taxed, they pass it on to Steve Weiss, shareholder, then he has to pay a tax. So which do you want? Do you want more would-be Amazons who monopolize and then go horizontal and, and get into industries that they were never even in and don't do dividends, don't do um, um, buybacks that you think are artificial? Or do you want to just have people get to a point where they say, I don't want to pay the taxes on, on, on all this investing. So I think you have to, like, decide that it's going to be somewhere down the middle. And then, John, your point is really well made. But I think we all can differ on how, how far to the left or the right of that middle will be. I, I, think I so won't apply the math. Down. I'd like to take a crack at the math to your point. Okay. Let's say dividends are yielding many companies 3% these days. We accept that. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah. major companies. And okay. if I'm right, and I am right, twice as much money has been paid out in your tax-free that would make, if that were all paid out, it would be 6%. But under the present thing, if I paid a 20% tax on that, and it were all paid out in dividends, it would be a 5% yield. I think the stock market would trade much higher if a lot of stocks yielded 5% with the 20% tax on the extra money than 3 And I never thought about that till you press me on this discussion. But what if we, sh but, but what if we say um, the S&P 500, let's say the average stock has shrunk its... Um, it shares outstanding by 10 or 12 percent, and so we got there anyway. Well, the fact is, I, the fact is that corporate issuance is, I think, running at a 3, 4, 5 percent, 2, 3, 4 percent these days. It's a mm -hmm. very big number.